facts, a lot of work is going on in your cells. Let's dive in and understand it further. Now we have arrived into a space called as extracellular space. It is between two different cells. It is sticky and just holds the cells together. Each cell is covered by a cell membrane and it is the outermost layer of the cell. It has several channels. Now we are entering through one of the channel. We are now going to see the cytoskeleton which is made up of three filaments known as the microtubules, microfilaments and the intermediate filaments. They form the structural fr framework of the cell. They also help in transportation of substances. For every activity inside the cell, energy is required in the form of ATP molecules which is produced here in mitochondria. You can notice that the outer membrane is normal and the inner membrane is folded into several cristae. Mitochondria oxidizes the food and releases energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate which is ATP. This ATP is used and stored by the cell. Talking about the nucleus, we pass by a network of tube-like structures called endoplasmic reticulum. Nucleus is enclosed by double membranous nuclear envelope and contains nuclear pores. Entering through the nuclear pore, we are exposed to a dense chromatin network. The nucleus is the house of genetic material called DNA which is in the form of chromatin network. DNA contains hereditary information and almost 2 meters of DNA is present in every cell's nucleus. DNA is coiled around histone proteins. Different proteins attach to the DNA and use the DNA as a reference template to form messenger RNA. The messenger RNA molecules travel from the nucleus to the cytoplasm carrying the instructions for making specific proteins. In the cytoplasm, a ribosome uptakes this mRNA and proceeds along the messenger RNA by producing a new protein. Therefore, ribosomes are known as the protein factories of the cell. Endomembrane system is a house for processing of proteins and other metabolic activities. Endoplasmic reticulum is a part of endomembrane system. Here, Processing of proteins continues. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the rough ER and which is started with ribosomes and also the smooth ER which is devoid of any ribosomes which you can see in the background. In smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lipid synthesis take place, takes place. Going into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, we can see ribosomes on the surface manufacturing proteins. This work continues and they keep on manufacturing new proteins from time to time. The completed or processed proteins move to the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum and are pinched off from the surface. Some of the vesicles fuse with the Golgi bodies which is also a part of endomembrane system. In the Golgi, proteins are further processed and packed. Such finished proteins are then packed in vesicles which are pinched off from the Golgi and are transported through the cytoskeleton filaments. Some vesicles attach to the cell membrane and release the contents outside the cell. Lysosomes are fluid-filled sacs which contain digestive enzymes. Here, a lysosome is seen fused with a damaged mitochondria which is, now it, which is going to be digested. This dynamo of activity in the trillions of cells in your body requires millions of ATP which of, of which you are completely unaware of. There are also centrioles which form spindle fibers. Plants are also multicellular organisms, same like animals. And they are autotrophic and can prepare their own food. Diving into the leaf of the plant, we see numerous cells. Plants breathe through minute openings called stomata. Entering through a stomatal pore, through a stomatal pore, we'll be exposed to the millions and billions of plant cells. 
Every cell inside a plant body is covered by a rigid cell wall. The cell wall is a non-living membrane and it is in turn covered by the cell membrane inside. Diving deep inside, we will enter different cells. Entering into a single cell, we reach the cell wall, then the cell membrane and we expose it to different cell organelles inside the cell. Now, diving into the kitchen of the cell, which is nothing but the mighty chloroplast. The plastids, chloroplast is a type of a plastid. All the plastids are double membranous structures and are the organelles that can manufacture and store pigments. In case of chlorophyll, they manufacture and store chlorophyll pigment. The chloroplast contain several disc-like structures called the thylakoids. They are flo seen floating in the fluid called the stroma. Now each thylakoid contains thousands of chlorophyll pigments which are green in color. These chlorophyll pigments continuously trap the light energy and convert it into the chemical energy or the glucose molecules. It is because of this chlorophyll the plants have the characteristic green color. Light is trapped by the chloroplast and therefore useful for photosynthesis. A typical plant cell contains similar parts to that of an animal cell. Generally, if we focus towards one cell, nucleus is seen pushed towards the periphery, whereas the majority of the portion is occupied by a vacuole. Coming to the nucleus, it is a storehouse of the genetic material called DNA or the deoxyribose nucleic acid. We can also see nucleolus which is releasing ribosomes. Ribosomes are released into the cytoplasm through nuclear pore. As discussed earlier, rough endoplasmic reticulum contains many studded ribosomes. All the organelles float in the cytoplasm which is a jelly-like fluid inside the cell. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. They are the rough one as well as the smooth one. The rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum contain space between the tubes called lumen. Coming to the other bodies which are Golgi, Golgi bodies which are parallel flat discs. These, these sub, here the substances are processed, stored and then transported to other cells. The powerhouse of the cell is mitochondria which releases, releases energy in the form of ATP. The size and shape varies from cell to cell. Each plant cell is surrounded by a sem semi-permeable living cell membrane which acts as a gate that separates a cell from its external environment. It is further covered by a cell wall with multiple cellulose layers. It is rigid and tough structure and acts as a frame and gives a plant cell a particular shape. It also prevents water loss and it is a permeable membrane. The plant cell uses the solar energy as the fuel for the production of compounds like glucose for its food. This happens in the green bodied organelles called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll as discussed earlier and they convert the solar energy to chemical energy. A large vacuole is seen occupying almost the entire cell. Presence of vacuole is one of the most important feature of a plant cell. It is covered by tonoplast and filled with tonoplasm or cell sap. Cell sap is mainly water and other fo stored food materials. All these organelles of the plant cell cooperate together ensuring the proper functioning of a plant cell. These organelles are commonly found in all the plant cells irrespective of the type of plant cell. All the cells, be it plant or animal cells, they divide to produce new cells. Coming to the process of cell division, there is a process called mitosis where nuclear division occurs first. After the mitosis, the cytokinesis division of cell takes place. First of all, in the prophase, the nuclear membrane and the nuclear nucleolus break down. Here, chromatin network duplicated and formed chromosomes. Now, the centrioles form the spindle fibers 
which align the chromosomes along the center along the center of the cell all the chromosomes after being aligned in a single line they will be shortening of the microtubules or the spindle fibers which pulls the chromatids of the chromosomes to the poles some unattached microtubules elongate therefore increasing the length width of the cell late slowly the spindle fibers start disappearing and further the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus began begin to appear the chromosomes relax and they'll form the chromatin network again spindle fibers slowly disappear now after the nuclear division is completed now it is time for the cytokinesis or the cellular division which is brought about by a pinch in the cell membrane finally the cell divides into two cells in the other type of division called the meiosis or uh, some people call it meiosis the dna condenses to chromosomes the chromosomes which are homologous fuse which is called synapses and they exchange material called crossing over so now the microtubules form spindle fibers each homologous pair is attached to the spindle fiber and uh, here you can see that each pair of homologous chromosome uh, is getting attached to the spindle fibers of microtubules now the microtubule will be shortening and it will pull the chromosome to the poles right so after this happens after this happens the nuclear membrane slowly starts appearing back the nuclear membrane will form but though the nuclear membrane forms the sister chromatids or the two chromosomes in the in nucleus are not same they're not identical so therefore they have to be further divided so the entire process repeats again that is the centrioles appear again the nuclear membrane disappears spindle fibers are formed and again the chromosomes are aligned on a same plane and again they are uh, moved to the corners right so they'll be pulled towards the poles and again the spindle fibers disappear and finally the cell divides into four new